Hi, and welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel and video number one. I've been collecting neglected and orphaned Commodore computers and accessories for a little while. And what I like to do is um, try to resuscitate and repair, refurbish them, uh, giving them a new lease on life and hopefully finding them homes with people that will appreciate them. I've selected these three computers because they are in the poorest condition of the ones I have, in particular this one here on the bottom. And what my plan is, is to use these as donors for parts. For sure the third one's going to be the most interesting one to take a look at, the one here on the bottom. Uh, when I first received it, it was held together with packing tape. Uh, it would just fall apart in your hands otherwise. And I think all the posts on the bottom are probably broken off so it won't go back together. I did give it an initial wipe to clean it up to make it a little easier to handle, but uh, I can only imagine what's going on on the inside. Okay, I removed the RF shield from the board to take a closer look. This is assembly number 250425, revision A, uh, one of the earliest revisions of the motherboard. All the chips are socketed, which is nice for scavenging, although they do have the original thermal compound on them, so that'll have to be removed, obviously. Now, interestingly, there are two micro-grabber clips on R44 and R45 that are attached to a wire that leads out through the cartridge port to a broken switch, so probably some attempt at a reset mod, perhaps? I'm not quite sure, and I'm not familiar with that type of reset mod. So here's a closer look at the board, and here's the two micro clips on R44 and R45. I'm going to pull those off, obviously, because they serve no purpose. Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking up all the grungy details, like the schmutz on the PLA chip there, and sort of a greasy coating that's all over the board and chips. It's, it's pretty nasty. And I'm noticing handwritten notes on the PCB as well, which are probably from somebody pulling chips and replacing them later, so I guess they have left a trail as to where everything goes back. Uh, yeah, and overall everything's really dirty, so probably a good candidate for plucking these socketed chips off of, and hopefully they work and I can use them in other boards. Yeah, this board has definitely seen much better days. Well, as if the motherboard wasn't bad enough, I'm taking a look at the bottom of the case, and what is this business? Some kind of contamination, liquid damage, somebody spill a coffee, it made its way through the user port, settled in the bottom, dried, forgotten about, I don't know. Along with that, the whole thing is just grungy and nasty. Very gross, both sides. And you can see here where the mounting posts have snapped off. That's why it wasn't staying together. But having said all that, I think I'm going to give the whole thing a good scrub. Well, now I've done it. I made a clean spot, which turned into a clean area, and ultimately turned into a clean motherboard. After a uh, good two-hour forensic cleaning session of the motherboard and the case. I'm happy to say I'm really pleased how everything turned out. Uh, everything cleaned up quite nicely. So I've had a change of heart and I think that I'm going to keep this computer and not pull the chips off it to use as donors. I'm going to continue repairing it and refurbishing it to get it back to a functional state. I should also mention that I did remove all the socketed ICs, clean the legs, clean the sockets, and reseated everything. And uh, I also gave the top of the um, composite output shield a bit of a scrub with wet dry sandpaper. It looks pretty good. And I had to do some extra cleaning down at the bottom because whatever was on this board was really thick at the bottom. This sort of sticky, goopy stuff. So there's uh, extra care taken along the bottom here to clean that. And one final nitpicky thing I like to do 
is to clean the oxidation off the contacts from the user port and uh, data cassette ports. And a little bit of elbow grease and it makes a huge difference. So I use an old uh, typewriter ink eraser. The rubber is a little bit dry but still has a fine abrasive in it and it works really well for cleaning these contacts. It's just something I like to do. Okay, so everything's been cleaned up and computer reassembled. You'll notice the case looks much better now. And the only thing left to do is power it up. Here we go. And black screen. Okay, the adventure continues. As you saw, we got a black screen when powering on this Commodore 64. And a black screen can be one of the most difficult things to troubleshoot on these computers because it can involve one or more than one of any of the chips on the board. Now, the usual suspects are one, the uh, PLA chip, also the VIC chip can be a problem, as well as the CPU itself. And in other more rare occasions, we might have issues with RAM, uh, the kernel ROM, and in some cases, it can even be uh, this little logic I see, the 7406, uh, this little fellow right underneath the CIA chips. If it fails, that can also cause a black screen. And usually what I like to do at this point is plug in the Commodore dead test cartridge and see if that yields any clues as to what the problem might be. I think I'll try that and I'll be back in a moment. Now just before I plug in the dead test cartridge, I want to share a little diagnostic tip I picked up from another YouTuber, uh, Frank. His YouTube channel is IZ8DWF. Uh, Frank repairs uh, Commodore 64s and VIC-20s and goes into really in-depth analyses of uh, what the problems might be related to various chips and, and whatnot. Frank explains to watch for that black video bump or flicker when you first turn on the Commodore 64, especially if it has a black screen. If you don't get that video bump or flicker, it could be this chip right here which is the uh, 8701 clock generator for the VIC chip below it. And if uh, that chip is dead, it can cause a black screen and you will not get that video bump or flicker when you first power it on. Now in our case, we did see the flicker, which is a good thing. That indicates that this is not the problem and we can move on and investigate other chips. Okay. Definitely a really good tip. Okay, I just finished plugging in the Commodore dead test cartridge and something very interesting happened. Absolutely nothing. And in this case, absolutely nothing is a good thing because the dead test cartridge requires the CPU to be fully functional in order to operate. It runs RAM tests during the first 20 seconds or so. And in the worst case scenario, we'll flash the screen indicating RAM errors and the positions of those bad RAMs. So in our case, this indicates that the CPU was likely not functioning and able to execute the code on the dead test cartridge. What I'm going to do is pull this one out, replace it with one from uh, one of the other Commodore 64 so that I showed at the beginning of the video, pop it in here, and if we're really lucky, it'll work. Right, so here we go again. Everything's been reassembled. Uh, the new CPU is in place and we're gonna turn it on and see what happens. Here we go. And, wow, this is a really lucky fix. There could have been so much more wrong with this Commodore 64, but we really lucked out with just replacing the CPU, which I didn't really expect at the beginning because a faulty CPU is not all that common. Uh, I would have suspected something else before it, like the PLA or one of the other ICs, or multiple ICs for that matter. Anyway, I'm really happy with the outcome. I will do some further testing, but I think I'll end the video here on this happy note.
We started off with what looked like a junk C64 at the beginning of the video and ended up with a resuscitated C64. That's a win for sure. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would appreciate a thumbs up. Also, I would love your feedback, so please comment below. Oh, and please subscribe. If you're into retro Commodore fun and fix-it projects, I have a lot of other interesting things to share with you. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Bye for now. Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi. Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi there. Hi there. Hello. 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 Ni hao. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey. Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> and 